Look at this. I know. This is insane. This is so cool. This is absolutely amazing. We are high up there. I'm so, so excited. This is so much more magical and amazing than I ever even imagined. The Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta is well underway and we are so excited to be a part of it. Not just to be a part of it as a visitor, but crew. Our friend Richard is a pilot and he has been a balloonist for decades. He's here piloting at the event and we're gonna be helping him out this week. We're gonna be showing you a little bit of what it's like to crew behind the scenes so you can see a little bit of the hard work that goes into making all of this magic happen. Richard is getting the balloon ready, so I gotta go. Started in 1972 by Sid Cutter, the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta has grown notably from its humble beginnings of just 13 balloons. This year at the 50th anniversary, nearly 650 balloons have gathered to fly, making it the largest ballooning event in the world. Look at all the balloons! As the pilot, Richard's the head honcho, ensuring everything is ready for a safe flight. His crew chief, Tom, is his right-hand man. And then he has additional crew members like us to support him with whatever they need. From setting up baskets to inflating the envelope, the magic of flying wouldn't happen without the crew there to help. All right, um, uh, start heading out. Roger that. <laughs> uh, you know which way you're going? Whichever way the van takes us. Uh, so when you uh, head back towards the west, you're going to take a left, get the south end of the field. Copy. Did you hear where we're going? Because I don't know. Yeah, southwest of the field. No wonder you need a huge crew. It's insane and really stressful. We are in the chase crew, which means we are in the vehicle that follows the balloon to pick him up. I guess I'm driving. <laughs> Richard definitely described it best. It's a whole lot of hurry up and wait. And when you're on the chase crew, you're basically just following them. But right now we're just hanging out in a parking lot, not very far from where we started. <laughs> Look at this. I know. This is insane. This is so cool. When you're flying, the pilot is constantly on the lookout for a flat open space for landing, based on the wind speed and direction the balloon is going. You want to get in the right hand lane, you can make turning right up over the curve of the bridge. Our job is to follow along, meeting the pilot there before landing. Because once the balloon goes down, everything happens extremely quickly. Come on down and get out, hurry up. We didn't even get the whole landing bit because it is so stressful and it comes so fast. You just have to be on it. And we had an extra crew coming to help. Now our crew's helping extra other crews. Yeah, I think you can volunteer to crew. If you don't have a friend that's flying, I think you can still get this experience. But I highly recommend it because it gives you a whole new appreciation for all that is happening in the air and how much skill and physical work goes into it. Woo. Man, this will keep you young, that's for sure. Stop it. Stop it in. This is the old way to do it. I'm getting lightheaded. I need some food. So over 200 years ago, over in uh, France, the Montgolfier brothers started ballooning. Their first balloon, they uh, dug a pit, would burn anything that would create smoke, and they put this big balloon over top of it to capture all the smoke. They thought it was the smoke that made it made it go up. Huh. Their first balloon, they put a chicken, duck, and a goat in it to see if they would survive the flight. And once they discovered that they did survive the flight, then they started doing man flights. With, uh, in that same type of balloon. Technology has gotten better and they realized it wasn't the smoke, it's just hot air. They used gas during the Civil War. One side of the Civil War had a gas balloon to do observation. 
and then they would get shot at. The other one would have a balloon, they would get shot at. So that technically is really the first air-to-air -air combat to two gas balloons back in the Civil War, observation balloons. So now we do the modern was the hot air, propane, much safer, more stable. There's also a tradition, which I didn't mention, when the Montgolfier would land their balloon, peasants didn't know what this thing was. They thought it had captured these two guys, and they were gonna run up with pitchforks and knives and kill this dragon. Every time they would fly, the, the balloon would be destroyed. Everybody knows about champagne, so they carried it on board, and when they landed, they would offer this to the peasants, and then that would calm them down, and they saved their their balloon from being destroyed. So that's why there's a tradition to having champagne. If you catch the cork, you'll get a free ride. Free ride back to your hotel. Oh, I should let you finish the free ride story. I caught it though. That's crazy, good job. Right. So a little balloonist prayer. The winds have welcomed you with softness. The sun has blessed you with his warm hands. You've flown so high and so well that God has joined you in your laughter and set you gently back into the loving arms of Mother Earth. Here you go. You are now official aeronauts. Or nuts. Aeronauts. Nuts. Nuts. Dennis. Thank you. We're getting a breakfast burrito because we're in a holding pattern for the balloons this morning. And apparently this is the thing that you have to do at the Balloon Festival. Breakfast burrito with green chilies. Bacon, eggs, and green chilies. I think that's it. I don't know if there's anything else. It's hash browns also. Yeah. A ton of stuff. About to find out. I mean the one at the restaurant yesterday was better. Ah, restaurant's better. Okay. Going for another one. We're gonna try Pericos. Not even done with this one. I'm already trying to figure out what I want to order next. This one has a tamale breakfast burrito, which sounds banging. But I don't know, should I just go traditional? I mean, if you're comparing apples to apples, you That's have true, to go all right, then I gotta go with the regular breakfast burrito. This one's already heavier. Oh, yeah? And it was cheaper. I can't believe I'm about to eat two breakfast burritos. <laughs> you don't have to eat this the whole thing, you can save it. Oh, yeah, I do. I eat the whole thing. Oh, my God. This one has more egg and potato. And the Southern style have more bacon and green chili sauce. But I would still highly recommend going out to a restaurant and getting a breakfast burrito at a sit down place because they're by far better than these. We're back at the RV, they have officially called it. Fiesta activities are canceled for the day. It's already started raining and it's only supposed to pick up more throughout the evening. It's a weather dependent sport and the conditions aren't always ideal for flying. I think two out of the five days already so far for the Fiesta, they haven't flown. So if you're coming to the event, make sure you're patient, make sure you're flexible, and hopefully stay for multiple days so you can kind of maximize your opportunity to see all of the balloons go up in the air or fly yourself. But we are very thankful to have our RV just right across the street. We're back in there, the heater is on, Dennis is gonna take a shower. I'm gonna cozy up with a warm cup of tea, maybe take a nap. And it's also the perfect opportunity to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Organifi. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that I am absolutely in love with Organifi Superfood Blends. But they just released another new seasonal blend, the Gold Chocolate. It's a spin-off of their best-selling Gold Blend, but this one is a play on hot chocolate. And it has all of that creamy, rich, chocolatey goodness that I crave during the holiday season. But it still has all of the yummy organic ingredients from the Gold Blend, like turmeric and ashwagandha, ginger, to help me relax and unwind in the evening. It also has around 23 grams less sugar per serving than a traditional hot cocoa, which means I can enjoy this guilt-free. It's become my new favorite and I am blowing through it. This seasonal blend won't last long, so make sure to grab your own using the special link in the video description below and use code ESRV to get 20% off your order. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to fly today. The wake up calls are super early. We've been waking up at 4.30 every morning and our friends have been waking up even earlier because they have to drive here. We're walking right now. Cause we missed the bus we at the We missed the station. shuttle. Uh. But hopefully the shuttle will pass us and then we can hop on. It's about a 20 minute walk from the south RV lot and there are RV lots that are closer, but. Well, they're much more expensive, right? Well, and it's just hard to get to. I right. mean, we just got to... Limited spots. The South yeah. RV lot is huge. That's why we ended up here. Really, because it was the only availability. So I just took whatever we could get so that we could come and be close. Wait, 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 wait! We got it! Alright, it is the 6 o'clock hour. Let's get this fiesta started. Today is Thursday, October the 6th. Our sunrise is at 7.06. It is day six. It's also a special shape day, and all those shapes are bringing their love to us today. So let's welcome all the special shapes that are here, especially the new ones. 
So really, I'm expecting light and variable winds, and we can start to see the Dawn Patrol kind of illustrating that a fact. And that's what I expect in the near surface layer. Look good? Oh yeah, great. We're gonna do what those balloons are doing. They're flying already. We're going to the west. Oh, okay. I'm not blowing it up. I am inflating the envelope. Yeah! Let's move the basket away. Grab right. the handle. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Incredible. Look at the balloons everywhere. So, so cool. This is absolutely amazing. We were on the surface, we were heading this way towards the east, southeast. We went up about 1,300 feet, caught a wind that took us to the north. Now we're coming back down to catch that southeast wind again. So up, down, and we're gonna be heading back towards that direction. There really is nothing like flying with hundreds of balloons. This is absolutely incredible. Bucket list is like not even an accurate work, no matter how much work it takes to get here do this. It's also so cool to see all the different shapes of the balloons. There's so many more balloons out than the first day we flew. And because today's special shapes day, some really, really fun ones out there. Oh, there's a fish. He's cute. We are high up there. Go ahead, Chase. Can you uh, pull out into the field and kind of let me know what it looks like? I like it kind of. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Wow. We're good. Been in the knees. Woo! Hey. Hey. Woo! hey. Right, <laughs> One more time. Oh, Woo! hello, hello. Ah! <laughs> All right. Way to go. I'm going to play up my first time. Ah. <laughs> now, hi, buddy. Ooh. That was sick. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> That was absolutely amazing. I just had the best day of my life. Morning in my life. It's only been like, I think it's 8.30 a.m. You've been up since 4. Oh, so worth getting up early. And I really, if you don't have a friend that you're crewing with or opportunity to go up, there are rider balloons that you can go on. I think it's called Rainbow Rider that you can like pay to be a passenger. It is so, so worth it. There's something absolutely magical about being up there with hundreds of balloons. The boys in the basket! <laughs> We've been coming to breakfast each morning after we finish our flight. It's a nice way to kind of round off the day. It's only like 10 o'clock when we're finished anyways. Or we've gone to a bunch of different restaurants, but the shop looks incredible. Gravy. We got chorizo, biscuits and gravy, and we got an Adobada Eggs Benedict. Their burrito looks good. They have blue cornmeal pancakes. I mean, come on guys. That thing. Are we going to eat all that? You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
was insane. Of course, we had perfect weather for the first glow of the entire seven days so far. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the wildest storm came. I mean, sideways rain. Lightning is popping off. Luckily, Mike and Shayna <laughs> are close. They're in one of the uh, west lot. So we ran to their RV and we're just gonna hang here. Now they're setting off the fireworks in the middle of the storm because, I mean, why not? Guests who are on site should move to the Sid Cutter Pavilion, Event Center, or board school buses, which are arriving on the launch field right now as a shelter in place. Oh my God. This is nuts. Every day is a new experience. It'll be the, the most beautiful weather day we've had. Yet. I think so, I think so. I mean, it's just perfect. And it's really special to be able to crew with it. I feel so grateful that Richard's here and that we're getting this experience because it gives you a whole different vantage point of, of this event. The main job of the chase crew is to just follow the balloon, but of course the winds change their course of direction. They're also constantly looking for a place to safely land, which can change where they go. So you're pretty much just driving around like a madman trying to make sure you're headed in at least the direction of the balloon. Right now they have a few roads closed, so you have to definitely be on top of it and be very good at navigating. We try to keep a visual on the balloon, that way we know which kind of direction that they're headed, but the radio contact really helps. Obviously he's getting the Google satellite view <laughs> where we're getting the, the street view so he can tell me which way to go. It's behind those trees, that's him. Right at tree level. We actually made it to the spot where he's going to be landing before him, which is great. Sometimes the chase car doesn't make it there in time. Of course, more helping hands there when they land is always better. So we got to go. There you go. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. They're down, it was a perfect landing. We're gonna have to use the old school method where we gotta bring the bag to the balloon instead of the balloon to the bag. So that means we're gonna be dragging it as we lift and stuff. At the same time, this is the most labor intensive way to do this job. But hey, we don't wanna mess the balloon up since it's on the street, you know? You done scrap some? Lift up on the count of three. One, two, three. Awesome. They canceled the glow. This has been the most red flags of any Albuquerque balloon fiesta in all of the 50 years. But I don't care because it was still absolutely incredible and magical. Even if you get one amazing day out of the nine days of this event, it's worth it. So no glows the whole week. But it doesn't matter, we've got alcohol. <laughs> We're in a van, drinking together. <laughs> men just doing their work <laughs> doing what we do good at <laughs> doing what we do best, <laughs> we do best. Good, best at okay. <laughs> did you get camera shots hey, i can butcher any language <laughs> <laughs>